This is another request from Patreon member Bobby for the movie Erase Ahead from the year 1977. Now, in this episode of Movie Breakdowns, I'm gonna talk about it. What's up, world? Welcome to the episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And before I jump into the review, if there's a movie moment to review, let me know. Please put in the comment section below and I get to it as best I can. Also, I have a Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka for $2 a month. Get the cut in front of everybody, get your review away before it on Facebook and YouTube, and get much more content on there. Now, let's go ahead and get into today's episode of 1977's Eraser Head by David Lynch. And what is this movie about? This movie is about a guy named Henry who finds out that a girl he's been talking to is pregnant and she has a baby. And then from there, this baby who is kind of deformed looking lizard like creature is constantly crying throughout this movie. And David and his new now wife, girlfriend now wife, had to get used to this baby who's crying throughout this movie. And from there, things take a different turn. This is a David Lynch movie, and this movie's all in black and white. The movie came out in 1977, but it's in all black and white. And not because of, like, they couldn't add color to the movie. It's because David Lynch chose to be that way. He chose to be black and white, because 1977, I was thinking, like, man, they didn't have color during that time. And then, <laughs> funny, I was looking at, like, when did Star Wars Episode Four come out? And that movie came out in 1977 as well, and they had color. I'm pretty sure a 2001 Space Odyssey came out in 1971, and it had color. So David Lynch decided to not use color for this movie. And there are certain movie, certain parts of the movie where he actually makes it darker than just regular black and white. It's like a darker tint or darker hue of black and white, if that makes sense. Especially the dream sequence that happened in this movie. This movie for me was all over the place. The storyline I was trying to get into and then it's like David Lynch purposely decided to go against storyline and story writing in this movie. He wanted to give you more shock value versus just giving you a pure story about this alien like creature. Like I can get behind the mother being an angry person who's mad at the moment because her baby won't stop crying and keeps keeps crying and she wasn't ready for the kid and Henry who wasn't ready for the kid as well he just kind of like well it is what it is I got a baby might as well make something happen out of this and the baby won't stop crying and the mother's like I'm leaving I'm getting out of here because she's frustrated the baby won't stop crying and then the baby gets sick well before the mom before that happens the mother leaves and just gets out of Dodge like she leaves and and you're like, okay, well, I guess she's out the movie and is up to, you know, Henry take care of this baby. And then the baby just keeps crying and then all of a sudden gets sick and looks really, like, just disgusting looking. Just like, eh, it's not pleasing to the eyes at all. And, and like, Henry's like, oh, you are sick. Well, let me try to do something to make you feel better. And the baby just keeps crying and keeps crying, keeps crying. This is a, a spoiler review, so I'm not going, I'm going to spoil this stuff, but I'm not going to get all deep into spoilers in this movie. It's just my face value, thoughts and opinions on this movie and my review for this movie. The things that I like, the visuals are fine. I like the visuals. I wasn't really a fan of the black and white, but the visuals for the most part, like if you're trying to go to be shocking and horror and, and give a very disturbing vibe to people, you did a good job. Congrats, David Lynch. But that's about it for me. That what really holds me into this movie, just like oh, visually, is is weird. Cause personally, I checked out in this movie when I got the lady on stage, and she's stepping on what looks to be intestines or sperm. It's it's something, and she's stepping on it and squishing and bleeding out. I thought maybe it was the brain or spine. I don't know. Wherever. Bing or worm or whatever it is she's stepping on it's bleeding out and deep focus lens give you a more background detail she went in and like full-fledged review like not just review but like just back stuff and not just take the movie at face value but she went and like researched this movie versus me who's gonna get the face value version of it so you want to get more of like what those things could have mean 
go listen to her review. But for my review, I'm just giving what I've seen on the screen and then my interpretation of it. Which is funny because David Lynch also talks about... I, I, I did go look up David Lynch and see what was his thoughts on this movie. And he was like, it's for your interpretation. He's like one person, he said he wanted to get people sitting around a coffee table after this movie. And hear one person talk about this movie, another person talk about this movie, another person talk about this movie, and give their interpretations of it. He is purposely trying to get you to get a different reaction from the next person who watched this movie. And by that point, David Lynch, you did a good job. Because you got a different reaction from me that you're going to get from somebody else that's going to be different. Somebody else is going to love this movie. Somebody not going to love this movie. Matter of fact, there's a review out from 1977 with two dudes, and one dude was like, he can see why people would like this movie. And one guy was like, I freaking hate this movie. <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> I got a chuckle out of that because I was like, oh, so this feeling I'm feeling about this movie is not, is not a, it's, it's pretty much, it's pretty much, I guess, not the norm, but the, I guess I'm just going the norm for now. Like, it's not, it's not wrong, if that makes sense. It, but it could not be right either. Like, if that make any sense. The feeling I feel about this movie, we're just like, you're going for shock value. Okay, I get it. Story, you're just like, of it. Because one part of the movie is the dream sequence. And you compl it just, it didn't, like, give you an idea that he lays down. It just got ahead and switched right into that, mo into that scene. And... Then all of a sudden his hair's gone and you're like, what is happening here? I'm out. I'm out. I checked out. And then he has a, a lady who comes in like, oh, your, your, wife, your wife is gone again. And then he's making out with her and then the baby won't stop crying. And then the end of the movie, it gets weirder and you're just like, sure. 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 The things I didn't like, I guess I kind of talked about, I just, to me, the fact that he got rid of writing and storyline and David Lynch was like, you know what, it is what it is, I'm going to give you the shock value, it was, it was, gets me, I just, Mulholland and Drive I really enjoyed, it was, like, I feel like a complete, concise story, even with the twist at the end, I was like, oh, wow, and this movie, maybe because the black and white, they just didn't hold it together for me, it, I don't know, it just did not hit for me. I don't know why it just didn't, and I checked out. Like that, I, I literally just like once he started getting crazy and started doing like, oh, here's another film where he's going to shock people, shock value, versus like committing to a story. Like I would perfectly fine with the husband and wife have a deranged alien-like baby, which the time aliens are very prominent because Star Wars just came out this same year. So I would have been very fine with that. And they try to figure out how to work with something. The aliens won't stop crying. And who's the alien? Is it me? Is it her? Like, which one of us is, is a thing? We have a strange family. And, and this baby won't stop crying. They're fighting each other. Mom and husband, mom and dad fighting each other because they can't figure out what's wrong with the baby. And they're losing their minds. And they're going insane. I can get behind that. Being a brand new parent with a, with a kid who... who no matter what you do, just keeps crying and you're just upset. And you want to sleep and get some sleep, but you have a newborn. I get behind that. I can get behind that. But every little else you throw in there to be like, what well, about this little weird scene here and this little weird scene here? And the head cuts off and then pop the baby comes out and the baby's wearing a suit and the baby's doing this and some kid pick your head up and go running with it. I. It wasn't for me. It's not for me. And I think people, there'll be some people who will enjoy this movie, and there'll gonna be some people who won't enjoy this movie. And I am on the side of not enjoying Eraserhead. That's, that's, that's where it comes down to. But I get where David Lynch was going. I can see where he was going in this movie. Now, you care about that final grade, I'm gonna get to it. I'm going to get to it. It might shock some people, by the way, I'm talking about this review. It might shock y'all. But before we get there, we got to definitely talk about, you know, the producer, budget, and characters. So the director of this movie and the writer of this movie is David Lynch himself. He wrote and directed this movie. And this movie came out in February 3rd, 1979. Or sorry, 1978. 
but it's credit to night he basically made it in 1977 but it got released in theater in 1978 budget ten thousand dollars is the budget and it grows worldwide twenty three thousand dollars the cast you have Jack Nance who plays Henry Spencer there's times where Jack Nance wasn't directed to be like shocked or amazed by the things like for example the baby comes home he should have been losing his freaking mind when he has a moment he's like that's not possible we just you know had intercourse a few and also the baby was alive in the hospital he's like what he should have been questioning everything but he didn't and then when the baby gets sick he's like oh so you are sick look at your baby's face look at your baby's face Direct him better, David. Direct him better to have a more shock value of that. He was just fine. And then all of a sudden, grotesque thing pop up. He should have been losing his mind. I feel like Henry in this movie was too chill for what was going on. He was way, way, way too chill. Direct him better. Like, if it was everyday normal lifestyle and all some stuff happens, he should have been losing his freaking mind. He wasn't. I don't like the way... Henry was, or Jack Nance was directed to be Henry in this movie. It did not compute with me. Um, Charlotte Stewart, who plays Mary X, she was fine. She was the wife. Fine. Any other thoughts? Music, there's some music in this movie. Yes, there is. Don't really stand out to me. Most of it, I hear a lot of rain, a lot of background noise in this movie. Um, matter of fact, the first 11, part, first 11 minutes of this movie, there's no talking really at all. It's really just watching him remove throughout his apartment and everything. And then you have a lady who speaks to him and says, hey, there's dinner going on. You should go over for dinner, yada, yada, yada. And then you get more talking when you meet, you know, the wife and the family. But other than that, there's not really much talking. It's a lot more like just slow watching and movements of characters in this movie is this a friday night movie no nah, it's not a friday night movie i wouldn't really get together with your friends and family watch it if you get a bunch of film nerds and people who wants who like who enjoy movies and want to get a discussion from a group oh yeah this would be a movie to watch with everybody get a discussion but i wouldn't do a friday night like family get together blockbuster thing now this movie is rated or sorry not rated r it doesn't have rated but it is an hour and 29 minutes, and it is a horror film. So you're into horror because the visuals of this movie, you will probably be enjoying this movie based off the visuals alone. Storyline, not so much. All right, final grading time. I'm going to grade Eraserhead from 1977. I'm going to give this movie a C-. minus. This is a C- minus for me, a 70%. I... Visually, I get where you're going, David. I get where you're going. I'm not sure why I'm saying this like you're gonna watch this review, but David, I get where you're going visually with this movie. Like the the visuals and the ridiculousness of like an alien creature being birthed by a human, and all of a sudden it gets sick and they won't stop crying, and you just like gotta watch this thing. They want to show this thing, We're, like focus on this, and then the other scenes with the dream sequences, all that stuff. Like I get it. I get it. I get it. Even the chicken scene where you're like the chicken is moving his legs and all of a sudden it's like, it looks like blood is coming now or it could be something else. Ooze. But <laughs> I get it. I get it visually. Storyline wise, it just doesn't hit for me. And then some of the acting sequences in this movie just doesn't get with me either. So C minus, a 70. I also talked about something the mindset of 1977 and 1978. I would have saw this movie back then. What I would have thought. Now I probably would have been like, yo, man, this movie's wild. <laughs> I probably walked out like, this movie's wild. <laughs> Let me go watch Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a 70%. Like, I think this movie 70, came out in 1977. I think watching it back then, I've probably been like, yeah, this is crazy. But then since that time, there have been some good movies with horror and good movies with horror and story writing combined that you're just like, Alien's a good one, for example. Alien's a good one. So, yeah, this movie definitely gets a, a 
for same for me, a C. C minus. Gets a C minus for me. Let me talk about IMDb. IMDb gives this movie a 7.3 out of 10, so that's a 70 uh, C minus. Rotten Tomatoes gives this movie a 90%. That's an A minus from the critics. And then the audience score, they give this movie a 82%, so that's a B minus. So, in the reviews, it's all from the years, too. It's not just from, like, you know, 1977. You have people reviewing this movie from 1977 all the way to 2022. And a lot of people are loving this movie. And there's some people who don't like this movie. And uh, to me, like, everybody has their own opinions of this movie. I can see visually what you think from that time frame. I get it. But for me, this movie comes out to be a 70%, a C-. minus. If you seen the movie Eraserhead for 1977. What did you think? Please put in the comments section below. Also, I do know that Stanley Kubrick said this movie is one of his favorite movies. And that's fine. Matter of fact, I believe he watched this movie to get ready for The Shining. Which, I can see that. Visually, I can see that. Storyline-wise... But, yeah, that's my final thoughts. If you see this movie... What do you think? Please put in the comment section below and see you on the next episode of Movie Breakdowns and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you want to watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns. It's right there. Just gotta click on it and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all and keep being awesome.